Now we invite Dr. Keira Leon, a gastroenterologist, pediatrician from Caracas, Venezuela. She will be talking to us about the safety of Saccharomyces boulardii CNN, CNCM 1745. Good afternoon. After such evidence by Dr. Cohen, I am truly impressed. I, I believe we have to definitely think of Uruguay as a potential, or a rather a strong candidate to the championship. But I want to talk about safety. This is a great commitment being here for me. I am the, the only lady, I think, uh, up here with next to these wonderful male scientists of, from whom we've learned so much. But that's not all. It is an important challenge to talk about a philosophically important topic, safety. And I am sure that all of us here would like to know Sunday's results. We wish we knew for certain that Chile had won the cup for the first time. Or what today's score would be. Colombians, where are you? Are you sure? Are you confident? Well, all of this involves us all safety involves the human being. We all want to be safe. Safe uh, and also confident. Confident that our family will be w well, that our work is uh, in the right direction, that when we are old that we will have the proper, proper care. All of this has to do with safety. But what what does the say, concept of safety have to do in relation with a drug? And that's what, very briefly, we are going to talk about in closing of this Saccharomyces boulardii symposium. So, safety in relation to a drug is essentially to guarantee that no harm, lesion, or loss excess or accepting the probability of a risk of an adverse effect and the severity associated to the use of a given drug. Once we are clear of this, we now can talk for the next few minutes of caution, counterindications, recent evidence. We'll try to give you an update. Safety in immunocompetent patients, I think we all agree that this is uh, very clear, our concept on the use of immunocompetent patients. But there's a more controversial one. So let's awake, because Dr. van der Plaas needs a margarita, but I guess we all do as well. Let's see if we can finish this very quickly and adjourn to enjoy Cancun at the Hard Rock Hotel. So. <coughs> Whenever we prescribe a drug to our patients, we must all consider the possibility that this might cause a problem or not. And that is why we have to guarantee that it won't. So, let's talk about a case. Cases, are this I, I have two. One is, both are pediatric patients, by the way. I'm sorry for that. I am sure that uh, we can discuss them by the same with adults. So this is a six-year-old male patient hospitalized in pediatric intensive care unit due to sepsis of abdominal origin. Uh, triple antibiotic therapy, wide broad spectrum, of course, coverage. What do you think? As Dr. Van der Plaas said, there is no correct answer. What do we do? Is it safe? for us to use Saccha Saccharomyces boulardii in a intensive care unit patient? There it is. Thank you very much. OK, we haven't voted on this. So is it safe to give SB to this patient? 
answer yes, probably. In some cases, no. So what would you do? We're coming to the end of the vote. And we have, OK, I'm a little surprised. Yes, you say yes. It is safe to give Saccharomyces boulardii in, in this patient. We'll now talk about why you think so. It is controversial, actually, to use this in an intensive care unit patient. So moving on. What is the greatest risk we might face when using a probiotic, particularly Saccharomyces boulardii, in an intensive care unit patient? Well, essentially, fungemia. We know here in this room, this is something we always discuss, that there is an important risk of patients with Saccharomyces boulardii suffering fungemia. The first reported case of fungemia <clears throat> appearing in 1991, documented by Dr. Hennekin in this work uh, published in 2000, which is a compilation of cases reported in literature, patients with fungemia who were administered Saccharomyces boulardii. And he highlighted the possibility uh, that the use of central venal, venous catheters were uh, a factor in the development of this problem. Later on, Dr. Hennekin himself made a review published in 2005, considering all patients reported in the literature with the presence of an invasive uh, infection through to Saccharomyces, not just Boulardi, but Saccharomyces in general. And he documented 92 cases Only 30 persons were patients who had suffered a Saccharomyces boulardii infection. The others were to Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And they all had at least one predisposing uh, condition. Only 40% had Saccharomyces boulardii as a fungemia, as a risk for fungemia. Factors, risk factors, the most important ones were the presence of immunosuppressors. The IC, this, their stay in the ICU, the use of central venous catheters, the GI previous disease, and the use of broad spectrum antibiotics, and the administration of SRSB itself. So all of these factors have been documented as potential predisposing factors. Later on, this great group made a review, a great review, of all published works up to the year 2010, when there effects of probiotics were evaluated on research groups. And they tried to, to find out how many showed a report of a problem associated with the use of the probiotic in their work group. And they found that both in the group of patients who were immunologically na naive as immunologically compromised patients, there were no major reports of adverse effects with the use of probiotics. They, in this work, concluded the same thing, really, that risk factors for adverse events associated to probiotic treatments are a compromised immune system, an internal intestinal barrier dysfunction, that is a multi, multiple organ failure and severe acute pancreatitis, and the use of central venous catheters. This is a document from the Latin American Society on the use of probiotics in pediatrics, the Latin American Association of uh, Gastroenterology and Nutrition, that carry out an evaluation on the use of probiotics, particularly in pediatric settings, and they say that the risk of fungemia is one for 5.6 million people treated with uh, this, where the main risk factors could be 
the presence of central venous catheters. But I want to raise your curiosity because I did find some in favor and this I wasn't clear about this. I don't know if this is, well, this was not a recommendation, but it's worth reading more about anything. So I found this role that has to do with the use of probiotics in prevention of candida infection in critically ill children. In this publication, the group made a review. It's not really a research work. It's a, a review reporting that up to 70% of uh, pediatric patients using a broad spectrum antibiotic can present a colonization by candida, and in them, up to 5% of them might show with candida candidemia. So they ask what could be the potential role of Saccharomyces boulardii in uh, exercising some sort of prevention for the nosocomium. <coughs> Fungemia. And they propose that there are several mechanisms through which Saccharomyces boulardii can prevent such a colonization. We have to conclude this as important information at the time of researching about this topic. So, case number two. <coughs> this is another topic that we all love in probiotic conferences, newborn patients. This is a female infant born at a gestational age of 36 weeks. Neonatologist in the room, please join us in this discussion. He was delivered by cesarean section due to acute fetal distress, low birth weight, admitted to neonatal ICU for meconium aspiration syndrome, and on the eighth day of life, he presents abdominal distension and result reduction in respiratory heart and abdominal sounds with substantial gastric residual volume. The ne uh, necrotizing um, disease is diagnosed and my question, are probiotics indicated? Yes, probably or not. So you're not no longer thinking about this too much. So in this patient of necrotizing enterocolitis, okay, now we've come to a certain point of confusion. No margaritas for us. It's interesting to, to, dis, to discuss this once I'm done. Okay, so we have a tie, a sort of a tie here. This is not a good result for, at least not in the cup, in the soccer cup. Okay, let's go over this uh, in a little more detail. Yeah. We have a tie. We might have to go to the penalty shots. Okay, this was a publication published by Cochrane on the use of probiotics for the prevention of necrotizing enterocolitis in preterm infants. This was published in 2014, and they found that after a review of all the bibliography, they found 24 studies, including compatible patients with all requirements, of course, where about 5,000 patients or thereabouts were included, of whom uh, some went to control and others were patients using who used probiotics. In those groups, there were two who were treated with Saccharomyces boulardii. The, the final conclusion was there were no fungemia reports that, that it was statistically significant between controls and cases. No studies reported adverse effects, and therefore they were safe and well tolerated. And in that case, there is evidence. There is evidence supporting the safe use of probiotics in premature infants with these characteristics. So, now I have this final paper because this is something that always requires a certain type of discussion. Do we use it in immunodepressed 
or immunocompromised patients, particularly HIV patients. Well, this paper was recently published by the Spanish group talking about the uh, use of probiotics, particularly Saccharomyces boulardii, in order to achieve the microbial, microbial translocation and inflammation in HIV-treated patients. This was a, a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial trying to assess the markers, these markers of infected patients with biological suppression. This is very important. These patients had uh, received a minimum number of copies of the virus for at least two years, and they were uh, diagnosed as on, in suppression. Um, they received treatment for 12 weeks. The treatment was Saccharomyces boulardii, a, a probiotic, we could say a group of placebo versus control. And they found that after the use of the probiotic for those 12 weeks, there was a significant decrease in the use of a protein in order that is determined to evaluate the possibility of a bacterial translocation or a microbial translocation. And at the same time, there was a reduction in all parameters that have to do with the released interleukins that determine a certain degree of risk of inflammation. And then they conclude that the treatment with Saccharomyces boulardii decreases microbial translocation and inflammation parameters in HIV-1 infected patients, particularly interleukin-6, who, patients who have long-term virologic suppression, there were no complications reported. So this is the latest, Dr. Warner, he, 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 he is a part of the team who worked on this review. This was published this year. They talk about the administration of probiotics in, and symbiotics in immune compromised adults. I would like Dr. Warner, of course, to talk a little bit more about what they found. I'm just going to give you a summary. There were 57 clinical trials involving adult patients. They prove, pro, proved sorry, that the use of probiotics and symbiotics in immunocompromised patients above the age, the age of 18 was safe and there were no major adverse effects reported. In the second review, it was done in children, pediatric patients, and it included 74 clinical trials of which they conclude the patients under 18 were immunocompetent and immunosuppressed patients, both, uh, that is important, and the administration of probiotics in all cases is safe. So take home messages after everything we've talked about is there is a strong recommendation on safety for the use of Saccharomyces boulardii. Up to date, <coughs> counterindications are maintained about the use of, of SB in patients with central venal venous catheter, and that, of course, there are. It is necessary to carry out more studies to um, evaluate the, the use of patients in enterocolitis, necrotizing enterocolitis, and of course, immunosuppressed patients. Summary: It is well tolerated. It is safe. Of course, indications have to be followed as established by the various medical associations and those that have been reported in the products prospect in each of our countries. My favorite slide regarding probiotics. We know that the main probiotic, the most important probiotic in our life begins at the time of birth. And thank you for your attention.